In this video, we will discuss 7.1, which is the area of a region between two graphs. So in chapter seven, we're getting into the applications of integration. And so one of the first um, coming from the derivative, I mean, the definition of what an integral is, um, an integral is used to calculate the area of a function. This is a little bit different in that you're finding the area between two functions, okay? Normally when we integrate, we're finding the distance or the area under the curve, but above the x-axis. And so here now it's a little bit different. We're finding it between two different curves and the bottom curve may not necessarily be the x-axis. So it says, if f and g are continuous on a closed interval a, b, and g is always smaller than or equal to f for all x in that interval. This is just another symbol, uh, mathematician symbol way to use to write this statement. So for all, usually see that in textbooks as an um, upside down a. And then x, of course, is an x. And then in is used as this symbol, which kind of means like included. Um, and then your interval there. So this symbolization here means for all x in this interval. Um, I just want to clarify that so that way in case you see this symbols later, you understand what that means. Um, um, for all x in the interval, then the area of the region bounded by the graphs of f and g and the vertical lines x equal to a and x equal to b is a equal to the integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x, okay? Um, similarly, you can write this for functions in terms of y. So you can have y values, the lowest y value, the highest y value, and then your upper, or I'm sorry, when you're doing lines with respect to y, it would be the greater function in the front minus the smaller function in the back. And when you're talking about graphs um, in terms of y, it's usually the right side function minus the left side. So I've kind of described that here in words. Um, another thing I wanted you to point, I wanted to point out that is if you're using vertical rectangles, you use dx. So notice the difference between this formula and this formula is that here I have a dx and here I have a dy. Okay. If I have a dx, then I know that I'm going to be using vertical rectangles to, use, to calculate this area. Um, if I'm using dy, then I should be using horizontal rectangles to calculate the area, okay? So when you're doing that, um, your dx and your dy become the width. Well, it depends. If you're doing a vertical rectangle like this, then this part here becomes your width and this height here is usually going to be the top function, whatever that is, minus the bottom function, whatever that is, so that you can get that height there. Whereas if you're doing horizontal rectangles, remember the shorter part, the width of the rectangle, will be dy, and then you'll have to get this measurement here. Well, on a number line, whatever's on the right is actually bigger, and what is on the left is smaller. So it would be if I call this one G and I call or call that one F and call this one G, the width here would be F minus G, okay? So you have to be very careful um, or you can call them H and J, it doesn't matter what you call them. The F, G, H, J are nothing but names. Um, they're just all functions, different functions. So we use different letters to represent different functions. So. Um, the bounds should always form vertical rectangles. You got to tell me where this rectangle spans. So where does it start and where does it stop? So you take the leftmost x value as your lower bound and the rightmost x value as your upper bound. And then the integrand should be the top function minus the bottom function. Whereas if you're using horizontal rectangles, um, the bound should be the higher y value, which is usually... Um, going to be the highest number at the top and the lowest y value being the lowest number at the bottom. The integrand should be the right function minus the left function. So you're going to get a sense of there should always be a top and a right, or I'm sorry, a top and a bottom and a left and a right. 
And that's essentially how you get the dimensions of a rectangle, right? The height is usually got, is from the top minus the bottom and the width from the right minus the left. Um, it just depends on which way your rectangle is turned that those might swap, okay? But the dy and the dx, the little part of your rectangle will always be the width, okay? The height is the other one that you have to figure out. So let's go with an example here. We've got plenty of them. So you can kind of see this in action, and what it all means. So it says, find the area of the region bounded by the graphs of y equals x squared plus two, y equals negative x, x equals zero, and x equals one. Now, I do have a lot of students that attempt to do these problems without drawing graphs. I would hope or assume that they're doing them in the calculator, but really I like to see the graph. Now, I'm not gonna penalize you if I don't see the graph. However, it does help to put the top and the bottom, the left and the right into perspective if you do in fact have the graph. So for all of the examples, I do draw the graphs. Okay? Now, typically I draw them by hand. There's nothing that's preventing you from drawing it in your calculator and then just transferring that onto the graph so you can make sense of it all, okay? So if I were to graph, and I'm just gonna go from zero to one because that's the only part of the graph that I'm concerned about. So I'm just gonna say that's one, this is zero, um, this is one, and this is two, just to draw some units on my on my paper. I'm not using graph paper, it's not gonna be an exact graph, it's just a sketch so that I can get my ups and my downs, my lefts and my rights um, all together. So the graph of this, at zero, this function will be the value of two. At one, this function will be three, which is probably about right there. And it is a squared function. It is a positive squared function, so it will be opening upward like that. Now I am zoomed in, so there's not a real steep curve there. It's pretty wide, um, but it is a curve, not a straight line. Now here, negative x, let's draw that one. At zero, the y value is zero. At one, the y value is actually negative one. Now, based on my measurements here, it doesn't look like I went far enough, but I'll just call this negative one and then have a point down here. I didn't leave myself enough room here. But essentially, I should have a line. And this one is a line because x with no exponent is the graph of a line. So this one is curved and this one should be a straight line. Now, between x equals zero, x equals zero is actually the y-axis, that's this line here. And x equal to one, that is this vertical line here. So the region that they're wanting us to look at is this region here, okay? Now, I am gonna do things in terms of dx, Normally when your functions are given in terms of x's, you should be using dx. Um, so because my functions are given in terms of x, I'm going to use dx, which means if I'm going to use dx, I'm going to have to use vertical rectangles. And I'm just trying to train you with this idea from the very beginning, because as we get into more complex um, problems in this chapter, it really does help to get your bounds right with that, which kind of rectangles am I using? And then from there, do I do top, bottom, left, right? What do I do? Okay. So these are functions in terms of X. So I'm going to use DX, which means I'm going to use vertical rectangles. So I'm going to draw a random vertical rectangle here. And I like to color it in just so that I know where it is exactly. Now, the way you find the area of something, or the estimate of it, okay, is that you take this rectangle and there's a whole bunch of them, right? You've got one here, one here, one here, one here. They're everywhere and they're all connected. And you're supposed to take the um, area of each one and then add all those areas together. But what happens is, is if you let this width be smaller and smaller and smaller, your estimate becomes more and more and more accurate, 
Okay. And that's the whole definition of, of a, um, of an integral is to take the limit as this distance, this, uh, width goes to zero. Okay. But for now, I'm going to just pretend this width is DX. And then the height is what I need to figure out. Okay. So my area is going to be, now this rectangle is going to slide across, right? There's a whole bunch of them. What X value do those rectangles begin at? They begin here at X equal to zero. So that's going to be my lower bound. And then how far to the right do they go? Well, they go all the way to this um, X value, which is one. So that's my bounds. That's telling me where my rectangles start and where my rectangles were in. Okay, this is just one of a bunch of them. Now for the actual area, you need to have length times width. Now I know the width is dx, so I'm going to put that here. The length is actually, I look at it as a height, okay? But the height here is actually this top function minus this bottom function. So it should be the top function minus the bottom function. And that's what I'm going to put here in my integrand. So it's these y values minus these y values, and that gives us that length there. Now if I just do some algebra inside there, I will get x squared plus x plus 2. So all done is combine the negative symbols and then rearrange my terms to get this. Now I'm going to actually integrate. And then I'm going to remind myself to, con to remember to evaluate. So if I plug in one into each of these, I'm going to get one third plus one half plus two. And if I plug in zero into each of these, they're all going to be zero, which means I'm subtracting nothing. So then here, this part you can use your calculator or you can get the common denominator all by yourself. Um, but I'm going to use the calculator just to speed up the problem because this video is running a little long. Um, math one to put it into a fraction and I get um, 17 over six. So the error of this region they asked me to find is 17 over 6 squared units. We just don't know what the units are, but area is always supposed to be in square units. Okay, we don't know if it's centimeters, inches, or what. So they don't typically ask you for this, but do understand that area is always in square units. This is just the numerical value of how many square units you have.